food, the workers that came and picked the food and or sorted the food, the plastic bags that the food is in, all of this stuff is not carbon neutral. These animals are carbon negative, guys. And you're telling me that cattle farming is somehow destroying the earth when everything you're consuming comes in a little plastic bag that is hauled thousands if not tens of thousands of miles for you to eat. Now let's talk about fake meat. This is fake meat. This is a plant-based burger. I'm gonna eat it later. I'm gonna eat one of these later. I'll, I'll try it man. I, I'm not totally against it. If that's the choice that you make then let that be your choice. But someone manufactured this box. Let's just get into it. I haven't even opened this yet. Someone manufactured this box. The ingredients of this ultimate plant-based burger, that's the ultimate plant-based burger right there. Very simple, looks really good, looks like Oh man, sesame seed bun. Sesame seeds, huh? Well, I wonder where they're grown. I wonder if they're fertilized. Hmm, I wonder. Well, let's just see. All right, I just wanted to comment really quick on a couple things he said. Uh, the first one, he was talking about the box being uh, manufactured in a company. So I believe he's referring to like the CO2 emissions um, from the factory. And this is why when I talk about veganism, I don't usually go the route of the environment. But everybody's different. Different people have different amounts of knowledge. If I was talking to this guy and he brought that up, I would say that's just not something I'm familiar enough with um, to know the difference between what this factory does to produce a cardboard box versus what this factory does to produce plastic versus, um, you know, various different things uh, like how much... Um, the environment's hurt from uh, cars driving versus uh, planes versus cows, all these different things. And so the other thing was the sesame seeds and where they're grown and what the fertilizer is. So I'm guessing what he's referring to here is the idea that if the world went vegan, all the, the farm animals were gone, then without having the right like manures for fertilizers, it would be hard to, uh, to, to grow the right amount of stuff that we would need. Now, I've heard many answers to this. This is another topic that I, I'm not too familiar with. I usually focus on the ethics side of it, which is why I think that this is a good rebuttal to what he's saying, is we don't always have to push for the extreme. Now, I have extreme ideas. I don't think humans should even own pets, but I'm not always pushing for that when I'm discussing with something with somebody. If somebody has an idea that goes against mine or the vegan idea, I like to show them what could be done different than they're doing to cause less suffering that would be an acceptable answer to do instead of. So let's say this guy's right and everybody's saying that we need manure, that they're right. What's the best way we can get manure to fertilize fields without killing animals? So you could say, okay, fine, we need fertilizer, let's do it. Anything we need, we, we try to get and uh, we do it however we do it. But in the same sense that if somebody owned a slave and they could get a lot of work done with that slave, just because they want to do that doesn't mean that we shouldn't end slavery. We end slavery and then they have to figure out a different way to get what they, what they need done. So they need work done. So they have to hire somebody to work. You do the best thing you can do with what you got while trying to put in laws that prevent suffering and prevent freedoms being taken away. Um, I think it's uh, similar for, um, for people and animals. Now, I'm guessing most people feel um, how I do as far as um, viewing humans at a higher level than animals, or at least viewing your own personal self or um, the people within a society as the rights mattering a little more in a sense, which is why we would focus on things like not having our own rights taken away, um, you know, not having slavery, making sure like somebody doesn't uh, not have a right to vote or own land just because of their gender or anything like that. Um, we, f we focus on that first. And then if we can do away with having to use animals in any way, that would be great. But if we couldn't, if there was no way to do it and we needed manure, then what we'd say is, okay, what do we need? Do we need manure? Okay, we need manure. Do we need to eat animals or their milk or their eggs? Uh, no, we just we just need their manure. Okay, so if we just need their manure, then we figure out the best way. Whoever needs the manure, you can either have um, 
whatever we deem worthy of reasonable ways to get their manure. So if you have a large piece of land and we can say that this amount of cows can be on that land, then their manure could just naturally fertilize throughout the land. If people need to purchase manure, then we can have well-regulated areas where may maybe even like uh, natural reserves of sorts where you have cows and they're roaming and you know, it's not ideal. We're still forcing them to be somewhere, but we also are taking care of ourselves and knowing that we need to fertilize um, the the fields. Again, I'm not saying we need to. I'm saying if we need to or just playing along with their idea and showing, showing a counter. That way um, it doesn't get held up too long. And then people can gather the manure and they can that can be a thing they sell and that's a product they do. But um, but we'd still have things in place saying you can't kill them to eat them. You can't you can't harm them. You can't you can only have this many per per um, amount of space you have. So, so anyways, something like that. You don't need to go into that long detail of what I just said when somebody says something like uh, we need manure. But you can say, OK, sounds good. Yeah. Um, keep cows for manure. And then see what they say, because <laughs> usually the response is, "Oh, we don't, we don't need the manure." And then the person will say, "Oh, well, I just don't buy that." And then the vegan will say, "Like, oh, well, I have this study." And then the other person will say, "I have this study." So, so, so end it there. Get them to go. If you, the more you agree with them, the more they have to contend with what you're saying. So if you say, "Okay, I accept your premise." Now let's go with that premise. What should we do to cause less suffering? And then see what they say. Um, now, if your if your goal is to need to end it by trying to force them to not use animals whatsoever, then I guess maybe you can't go that route. But that's not gonna that's not gonna help you out.